let's start with that main event. Drickus Duplessis defeats Israel. By the way, I've been covering this guy for seven, eight <laughs> you years. still don't know how to say his name. And I, I know less how to pronounce <laughs> his last name than ever. Adesanya. 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 Whatever. He wins via submission in the fourth round. Chuck, I, there's so many different elements to get to about this. But the first question I have for you is quite basic. What does a victory like this prove about Drickus Duplessis? You know, it's funny because I think that a guy like him, it's almost it's almost reminiscent a little bit of when Whitaker came up. Because when Whitaker came up and he was actually getting into contention, there were like four guys. It was Joel Romero, there was Jacques Array, it was Rockhold, and Weidman, right? It was, those were the guys that were kind of in that space. And you're like, I don't know how he's going to leapfrog these guys. And so you didn't really take him seriously until he was doing it. This is almost like the Duplessis thing. He, I think that he was discounted because you could look back to the Whitaker fight three fights ago, and I think that people were like, that's the ledge too far. That's the one where he's going to be humbled, brought down to earth, whatever you want to say, like his, his streak will end. Because we'd seen him looking just like, you know, uh, unchecked momentum going in there against guys like Brunson and getting by with it, we thought that he would get settled, that kind of reckless look would get settled. And so we just discount him. It's weird because then he goes through that fight. He starts getting the recognition. And then, you know, the Strickland fight was a close one, but a kind of brilliant one in a weird way, too. Like he was uh, he was able to perform in that fight. And then he goes here. It's it's been a it's been a weird ride. And I think that what he's proven is that he's been good all along. It just maybe looks different than we're used to. Right. The aesthetic, the way he's doing it. But such a good fighter IQ. Um and I think he kind of outsmarts some of his opponents, man. That's what it looks like to me. Like, he wears them down, uh, confounds them a little bit, puts it in his wheelhouse whenever he wants to, and he gets by. But I, I think he's proven now that he's a he's a worthy champion. Like, he's a real champion, and we should appreciate him that way. Yeah, I mean, the one of the big lessons I took from this one was there were people out there that were like, okay, he beat Whitaker, that was nice. But they feel, like, some folks feel like he got away with one against Strickland. And that, that fight yeah. was close. I mean, it there's was really close. no denying. It was very, very close. But that Izzy was going to be the one to sort of restore order right. to the division. Um, and in fact, it, the opposite really happened. He was the guy who, I mean, the fight was also fun and competitive up until it basically wasn't. But that he was the guy that showed you, no, he's the best in class right now. This is the yeah. guy. And I was really thinking about this. I'm like, how is it possible? Like, yesterday morning, I get on social media, and it's filled with people mocking him. It's filled with people showing him throwing goofy ass punches that don't <laughs> land anywhere or right. blitzing with like his not not quite his chin up but like being vulnerable in a certain way and like this was the discussion after the fact and I'm like I'm not saying that those things on camera you're not noticing them you are mm. seeing them they are real but like let's take a moment to step back here a minute for all of the highlights you see of him let's say lunging or running at mm -hmm. someone how often is are any of these other world class fighters, former champion Strickland, former champion Whitaker, former champion Izzy, how many and other good fighters before that? How many times do you ever see him being forced to pay for it? Like True. when he comes through, they get out of the way. It's part of his part of what he is. He's, he's so physical. He's so in your face. He's like a machete just clearing brush <laughs> it is like that. And they have to kind of just get out of the way yeah. when he swings, which is part of it. But the other part is this, and and he. It doesn't show up necessarily like in any individual skill, but you brought up something, and I'm so glad you did. To me, Chuck, mm -hmm. what I see when I hear him talk, both at the post-fight press conference as well as beforehand, he had said beforehand, I thought Izzy had an off night against Strickland, then I fought him and I realized there was more to it. And then afterwards, he had talked about, you know, like Izzy was fighting a certain way for two minutes, and then the two minutes would be over, and then he would charge and take over. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't quite true in the third, but it was certainly true in, in, in most of the other rounds. He has a certain awareness about what is working, what is not, and whether it is pretty and whether it is balanced, and these things are important to a mm -hmm. degree, is not the most consequential part. The part is, does this work? When does it work? How does it work? And he systematically applies it in such a physical way that look at the results. He keeps yeah. getting his hand raised. It's true. And he mixes it up. You know, it's funny. We talk about that Strickland fight. It was a close fight. I think Strickland outstruck him by like 40 strikes. It was it, Strickland had the edge in certain ways. But the re, you know, the mixing in what was it? Six takedowns. It's kind of it's it's kind of what you're saying. Like, I think he reads the situations. And he changes things, and he takes it where he takes it to another spot. We saw him in this this fight. As soon as he started getting pieced up, 
which he did a little bit, like in the third third round he got third round, and then in the fourth a little bit. You know that lunging thing you're talking about, just kind of moving forward and uh, and taking the you know taking it to him. He it worked, and I, I, you're right. He doesn't really get caught on that, and that's where I think when I was looking at this fight specifically, I was like, you know, he's been able to get by with that a couple of times with the other guys, but I think Izzy being kind of a sniper who's a counter sniper, like especially coming off the back foot, like the way he, uh, you know, the way he stood in there and knocked out Alex Pereira, I was like, you could see a scenario where maybe he catches a guy coming in all officially trying to like, you know, um, caveman him or something like that. It just never happened. It was very strange. And I just, I think that goes into his fighter IQ. And you know, it's funny, you you analyze fights a lot um, and, and watch it, but I pay attention a lot to what they're saying. And he was... Uh, I, I heard him saying, like, Izzy, you know, he was breaking down Izzy. He was like, you know, he doesn't really throw combinations. You know, he throws punches with, you know, he, he was breaking them down in a way that you understood that he knew what he was doing. And all of those all of those things that we kind of accuse him of being reckless with are very, you know, they're very methodical, I think, very strategic. And he understood. I think he f- fully understood, like, whoever was initiating contact in the exchanges was winning the fight. It was It was pointed out in the broadcast, but... That was little, that was legit, and every time he lunged in, I felt like he was catching him. It was uh, I I think that he's a harder puzzle to solve for the guys facing him than people realize. For me, there were lots of people. Long Island Luke can attest to this too. People telling him this when he was betting. There were so many people, Chuck, and I'm sure you saw yeah. this in the lead up to the fight. They were saying things like, "Oh, this is the kind of guy that Izzy feasts on. Right? He's another bruiser like Paulo Costa." If there's any takeaway from this fight, and this was this should have been obvious beforehand, right. but now it is simply undeniable. This is not another version of Paulo Costa. No, this is not another version of. I never saw that, but I mean, fa- like, fair enough. Like, I'm not, yeah. nor, nor am I yeah. suggesting as much, but that there was some belief hanging sure. out there. And I'm, I'm, I'm listen. I've been a guy who's been a long time supportive of Izzy. I had a slight lean. I thought yeah. he might win, but in no way, in no way, was it true beforehand, and it is clearly not true now. Are there technical deficiencies in his game? Of course, there are in anyone's Mm -hmm. game. His, to some extent, do appear to be quite quite noticeable at times. However, however, (laughs) number one, the fight IQ is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's very, his assessment of like, what what is the principal task at hand that I have to solve? Very good. Number two, we cannot lose sight of this. Is he on the ground? It's always been almost only defense all the time. Right. He locked up a triangle on Kevin Kelvin Gastelum, which he used for a reversal at, at, at one point. That's a great point. But like yep. Anderson Silva would finish fights from down there. And for him, it's always been the floor is lava. I think that that plays with his ability to have reactions. Yep. That's the second part yep. I would say. Dude, Dracus Duplessis can win on the ground. He took Izzy down. He took, or I think, he, I don't know if he took Brunson down, but he took Till down, even in a goofy ass yep. way. But he took uh, Whitaker down. Like all these guys, Whitaker, Izzy, yep. he takes them all down. And then the last part I'd say is, dude, he is physical. And he's a goddamn tank, and he's durable. He's hard to hurt. Let, let, let ask a question. In certain fights, the like the I think the one he had in KSW against Roberto Soldich. Remember that guy? Yes. Of course. And Soldich stopped him. Yeah. Since then, when was the last was that time? Welterweight fight was it? Say again? It was a welterweight fight too. Back wasn't in the it? day, yeah. Crazy. Since then, have you seen guys land on Drickus in the UFC? Yes, of course. Yeah. But like this idea that he's like wide open to be hit. Well, if he's wide open to be hit, how did two of the best champions in the last 10 years at middleweight fail to really capitalize on that? Because the tape is somewhat, and I would argue, yeah. a little misleading. Yes. There's so much to it, man. Like, he uses his length in terms of moving forward. He uses his length. So uh, I, I point this out not to kind of diminish him, but actually, to, like, I, I thought Forrest Griffin's, but one of the best things he used to do was he would use his full arm length as he was coming forward. He would just kind of throw these punches. And, uh, it would have been a, it was it was hard for people to handle just given his size and i feel like i see a little bit of that with uh with duplessis too like you can just see guys he didn't get enough credit for kind of landing on strickland strickland's a hard guy to hit you know he's very elusive people don't really i mean i think they they think of the alex pereira knockout and they're like oh well he's you know he could be knocked he out he learned from that he learned from that and he doesn't get hit that is he could barely find him you know it's like but you could see the Drikas could he could hit him and that so the, to me i was like it's just you know, it's it's been it's fun to watch because he's adapting, I think, in real time as he's fighting an opponent. I think he also game plans really well, but I think he's he's able to kind of say, I know it's gonna work here, you know, or whatever it is. He always has a plan. He's fluid with his plan A, plan Bs, and plan Cs, you know, as some people don't even have a plan B. And uh I think that, that just it just shows, man. I think there's just more to him than 
people want wanted to realize coming into this fight. Do you think it you as a guy who analyzes fights, when you're watching him, especially against Brunson, because I remember it looked like he he looked like I always say it looked like a toddler who got hit and got activated and he's like coming down a hill because he was just forward, 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 chasing him around. Do you like do you think there's been an evolution in that? Or do you do you, do you think there's like when he's in those moments where he's just kind of charging forward, where he's fully in control of himself? <laughs> it's a great question. Yeah. Honestly, okay, so heading into the Whitaker fight, I was definitely on, who is that? This goofball yeah. is going to get corrected right. here. And then he goes and stops Whitaker, and I was like, okay, well, it's time to rethink everything you thought about this. And then again, you still see some of these things where he's lunging and off balance, or like, for example, there was a takedown, I think the takedown in the second round, he just kind of falls on the legs right. of Izzy, and it works. And it's like, here's my response to people who say that. Like, is that the technical way to take somebody down? Right. No, it is not. My response would be, do you think that's the first time he's ever tried that? No. Right. I guarantee he has tried this kind of lunging, using his weight, using his physicality, where to wrap exactly mm -hmm. to take him down. He, he is very, very physically strong and imposing, but then finds ways with his own dynamism, whatever you want yeah. to call it, to make it work. And honestly, we've seen this in UFC before. It's very, very different. There's many differences. But Tim Sylvia, Tim Sylvia was <laughs> yeah. a heavyweight champion. Now, he was huge, and he had a number of advantages, both in terms of his reach and his height. He was hard to hit. And he was not – Drinkus is actually a very good athlete, mm -hmm. but he was, he, Tim Sylvia, a little bit goofy. But, dude, this guy <laughs> knocked out Rigo Rodriguez. He became a True. champion. He, was actually, he actually beat some good guys along the way. Imagine if he was actually athletic. I know. And now what you can do when you're decently well-rounded, Drickus to me feels like a very, 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 very improved version That's interesting. of what Tim Sylvia was trying to be. Does that make sense? I think and it's, it's also just, you know, for him to be, like, his natural way of being may just look awkward to us. Like, it may just look awkward to aesthetics that are common in the fight game, right? Like, he just does things a little differently. That first takedown attempt, it looked like he tripped. I, it wasn't what the case. It kind of goes to your point, what you were just saying. Like, it looked like he kind of tripped and fell into his legs. He didn't complete the takedown, but it looked like he just fell onto his legs in that one, too. Very strange, but I think that's kind of just who he is. That's his, that's his range of motion. I'm always a little hesitant to talk about Tim Sylvia because I did a piece where I, I quoted... Monty, Monty Cox, you know, his old man. I, I manager, quoted Monty yeah. Cox, who was like, my big uh, piece of shit is now the champion of the UFC. He was quoting, like, back in the day, his thoughts when he became a champion, and they used it as a pull quote in a piece I wrote, and Tim Sylvia saw it, and uh, yeah, he got all pissed. You? He thought, I, I'm like, that's a pull quote from your own guy. I didn't say that, you know, but he wanted to he wanted to beat me up. I still like my chances against him, but uh, <laughs> but he wanted to beat me up at that time. Well, that's very common among fighters. They have, uh, they're, they're not known as the least sensitive group that's yeah. ever been. But okay, nevertheless, I, the, like, as I indicated to me, the big takeaway just being that like, if Drickus probably will continue to have doubters, especially if he goes up yeah. to a five, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But I feel like this fight really solidified the end of he's mm. just lucking his way through this. Like you don't get this sure. far lucking your way through this. By the way, he's been enjoying the victory lap here. I, I want to post if we can. <laughs> Long Island, yeah, he is. The he uh, tweet too, he yeah. sent to Drake, Drake the rapper who's been getting his ass <laughs> handed to him. He, uh, Drake had, I think, bet like something like five hundred grand, some enormous. Yeah. Well, what was it, Long Island Loop? God, I don't even know. I want to say five hundred. Yeah, some some enormous Pocket amount of money. For him. And afterwards, he sent him a text saying, "From the bottom of my heart, once again, <laughs> thank you in all caps, Drake." Oh my God. Uh, by the way, went after Brendan Schaub, sent him a couple of tweets calling him Love nasty it. things. Then today, went after Darren Till, called him a bunch of names. I saw that one. And went after Steve Urseg. Saw Calling him a six out of ten because that, well, that's what yes. Ursa had called him ahead of time. Yeah. Do you like victory lap Drickus? How do you feel yes. about it? Dude, I love it, man. I mean, come on. He's weirdly good at this. Like, he's weirdly good at har 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 harnessing his grudges. Is it Strickland he, like, was I crying. Know. Izzy got he's was, very good. Was brought emotional. Like, there's something about what Drickus does that doesn't immediately pop off. But then you look, you look at the outcomes, and you're like, Jesus Christ. It gets under people's skins. Like, I love it, man. Like, and that's, that's part of it, right? Like, if anybody ever snuck up into a position, it was him. Like, I don't think we fully understood who Drika Stuplessy was as he kind of came into the limelight, and especially as he you know, wins the title and all this. So he's still kind of showing off, like, who he is. He's still kind of peeling back the layers. It's a lot of fun, man. I love a guy like this. I love a guy who's like, he, the fight game needs that sort of thing. I, I think it makes it better. 
you know, when a guy's like doing this kind of victory lap and he's like rubbing it in people's faces, it shows a personality. You got to kind of understand the subtleties within his personality, but he is certainly starting to come into that light. I think in the lead up to this fight, it was a little bit weird, right? Because you thought there was going to be huge bad blood between these guys. That's what they were kind of promoting it as. Like these guys hate each other for reasons, you know, of the, of the African thing. But obviously, like we know that the, the broader implications of what was going on, we didn't know if it was going to turn really, really crazy. It really didn't, and part of that, I think, was because of Duplessis. It just, I don't know if he wants to actually play the certain games. He likes to play a mind game, but it's not like that exactly. So I just feel like we're learning about him, man, and it's it's been kind of fun. I have to say, like, Drickus fights, are you bored? You're never no. bored. I've never seen Now, it. I guess the Strickland fight is one that you could maybe make the argument, but that's, like, absent that, where you have yeah. a very unique style that's – Sean Strickland is the king of trench warfare, right, yeah. where – we're putting up a line, and I lob, and then you lob, then I lob, then you lob, and you have to kind of count who's right. got the most lobs at the end. But short of that, look at Drickus' fights. And sometimes, again, he's pulling Darren Till right on top I of know. him. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but they're not That's... short on calamity. They're not short sure. on action. Well, it feels like, you know, it feels reckless. And it also, he initiates contact, right? Like, I feel like he he's not a guy, like, if you got the wrong matchup where they're just going to patty cake through five rounds. I just don't feel like he'll ever do no. that. I feel like he's going to, he would initiate action at some point and probably very early he, in that fight. He never is in a place where he's like, okay, this is good enough. Yeah. He's always in a place like, okay, that's good. Can we get more? Can we get more? Can we get more? And dude, he just fucking knocks on the door. What's I his know. name? Still knocks? Still knocks. He's still fucking knocking <laughs> still at knocking. the door. Yeah, that's man. what he does. Now, you brought up something about the bad blood. There was an interesting moment after the fight, if we can, Long Island Luke, where the families met and. Izzy was given this uh, kind of jacket. I think it's got some relationship to South Africa. I'm yeah. not exactly sure. I don't really know. But, you know, it was, a, it was certainly a, a gift to an, a rival, to an opponent, to, uh, you know, a former champion. And uh, I, I got a question about this. warm your heart to well, see stuff he, like this? I, I will say this about the fight game. <laughs> How sincere this stuff is, I, you yeah. never know. Could be, couldn't be. You can decide. But my view on this is I saw some real cynical takes on this. And my view is... And then here he is. Uh, I think he was trying to make amends with the parents about not really knowing right. their story and everything. Because there was a lot about like, oh, they had servants yes, growing yeah. up. And I'm like, have you guys been to the developed world? That is in no way rare whatsoever. But okay, I don't even want to litigate it. But the, the question I had for you was, I actually really like these. Again, not because I necessarily think that they are always sincere. Maybe they are. Maybe they aren't. Yeah. However, the fight game has very few feel-good rituals where a winner tries to humble himself before the loser. Yeah. I actually feel like we should protect those traditions and we should be glad about them. I'm always so torn on this thing. Really? Because well no 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 not that specifically, but like I can't get enough of guys who hate each other either. Like you know <laughs> what I mean? Like I, I love that aspect of it because even after the fight? Well, I I don't I can appreciate when they do this. I think there is like this human moment where you're like, "Okay, the competition is over." They can shake hands. They can be buddies. I'm okay with it, but I also like it when the bad blood just rolls on because <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's it's the fight game, and it's like Chuck woke up and chose yeah. violence. <laughs> but it's like you know, it all leads. The, the greatest thing was like in other sports, you know, the ball's a metaphor. They're just gonna go compete against each other and try you know shoot baskets or whatever. But in this sport, they're gonna punch each other, and I always there's something about it. It revs up in its most literal form when they just can't stand each other. You Dude, know? I told you, I talked to this guy who wrestled D1, and he made this point to me years and years and years ago. And he was all, he always found it funny. He was like, Dude, yeah. after a wrestling match, we're talking like D1, mm -hmm. Penn State, Oklahoma State, you know, two national champions facing off to see what happens. Like, whatever, who, even if it's a pin or a close, doesn't matter, they'll shake hands, but it will be the most reluctant handshake <laughs> of all time, yes. right? He goes, in MMA, you'll get two former wrestlers who beat the shit out of each other, and then they'll embrace. Right. They'll have this spiritual experience. There is something different about hitting one another that the other sports cannot replicate that forces right. some of these traditions. I actually really kind of like this. And there is, and I can, and, and you know, to evolve that, you're like, there is a brotherhood to have and went to war. Like, if we fought afterwards, you'd be like, well, we're always going to share that. The two we're, guys, the two guys you know, in the ambulance, both exactly. in their gurneys, you know? And, and all that, that stuff is very cool because, you know, you have something now in history books with this guy. You went to war with him. I, I can appreciate that sort of thing. And I think that I could appreciate what was happening in this too because the bad blood was just so, um, it had the potential to be really ugly. ugly. And I'm glad it didn't get there, to be honest. But there was a part of me too that was like, I wanted to believe that there was going to be lingering bad blood. It's just it's just part of the way it, it 
you think of the fight game, you know? There's a conversation we're going to have in just a minute about what should be next for DDP. But before we do that, we do have to talk about Israel Adesanya. Adesanya? Yeah. Adesanya. Yeah. I don't know anymore. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I literally do not know. Izzy. Izzy. <laughs> How did he look to you? He looked good. Okay, so it's kind of a complicated question because if you compare him straight up to his hungriest, his rawest, like when he was lifting his leg and spraying, you know, and beating guys like Wilkinson, like it, when he was doing all that stuff and coming up, it just looked to me like he was not going to be denied. This was a hungry guy who um, you could tell was kind of bookmarked. Like he was going to be in big moments and he was going to thrive in them. And I think we saw that through the course of his run, all of his title defenses, um, something's happened. I'm not sure what, but I just don't feel like he has that whole thing in him anymore. Um, I, sometimes you think, well, it's because he's evolved as a human being. Like, he just sees the world differently. But you get the sense that he's kind of revving him. He's trying to rev himself back into that, mm -hmm. but it's maybe not clicking like it did. It's just, I didn't feel like he was fully that same dog, man. You know? There's just something about it. I just didn't feel like he was fully himself in that fight. I think he exercised a lot of demons knocking out Poetan, and I don't yeah. think he's been the same sense personally. I think that that was such a landmark achievement in his career that, I mean, let's actually back up a step. Like, here, let me tell you how I think he looked. Okay. I actually thought he looked physically prepared, mm -hmm. right? I thought he looked in shape. He did not look in any way out of shape. He was breathing through his nose well into the fourth round, which is very, very difficult to do, right? So I thought he was, like, engaged. Uh, he looked pretty good. Does he look a step slower physically at 35 than he did at 31, sure. 32? Yes, of course. But I didn't – did you – very quickly, did he look washed to you? No. I did not get the sense no, he looked. No, no. I had people being like, I this. thought he was going to win. By the at third round on, I was like, he's going to win the fight. And he, was, you know? he looked like he may have been yeah. on his way. One never knows, but he looked yep. like he was. He performed quite ably, I think, is the way I would put that. But in, in retrospect and watching it again, I got the sense that this is a guy that has, I mean, heading into this contest, whether he won or whether he lost, it didn't matter. He's still the second best middleweight of all time. Right. Nothing changes from that. Even if he had beaten Drickus. Now, if he got in the belt a third time, he enters some sure. kind of different history and it creates different opportunities. But it didn't really change his place at middleweight. He has achieved so much. Yep. And then you add in that crowning achievement over Poetan and then add on top of that that he's 35 years of age. He has well over 100 combat sports professional fights. Crazy, man. You, were, you saw him in glory back in the day, right? Like, I, I, yeah. I, but before I even knew who he was. Right. And then the last thing I want to say is, dude, the fact that afterwards, this guy who is, has been full of vinegar and piss and motivation and hunger and drive seemed to be okay with the loss <laughs> right. is incomprehensible to the other version. And I want to be clear, I am not in any way trying to be insulting. I am not. What I am saying is, even the guys who are this good, right. they have expiration dates. And I don't know whether know. he knows it, but I feel like watching from afar, Chuck, I feel like he has entered a different phase of his life. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if fighting should be a part of it anymore. What else is there left to do? And if you don't have that hunger and you're this right. age, that's and, the whole thing. What are we, what are we doing here? It's there was like a, something about his easy resolve with it that was weird. It was too it was just, easy. I know. It was, it was too, too easy. He was it way was, too accommodating yeah. of it. And then also, like, you know, even the even the words he was using, you know, through his run had such gravity, right? Like, he was saying things differently, seeing things differently. Um, and he was even saying, like, I manifested this, you know. After this, he was like, I didn't manifest this. Yeah. Which is this weird thing that you're almost like, it's just so out of the personality of this alpha dog that you've known for so long. Like, now there's almost a comic um, undertone to it or something, and I'm like... I don't know. It just I I I think you're dead on right though with the Poetan thing because we had this discussion. And in fact, I sometimes think he took this discussion because we had a discussion about whose story is it? Remember? Whose yes. story is it? Ultimately, this? whose story is it? Yes. He kind of has been talking about that since then. He's been like, Whose story is my story? It's my story now. And I have no idea if he actually got it from watching our show. It is it like, is very possible. It is possible though. And I was like, because it became like such a chief part of his narrative about reclaiming his story and identity thing, you know. Um and he, he was even saying it going into this one. And I think that that Poetan thing, because it got so crazy. You know, he's 0-3, basically, if you go back to the kickboxing. He's going in that last fight. It got so crazy for him that he was being erased because this guy was the bane of his existence coming to take everything from him, you know? And all of a sudden, he knocks him out. I do think you're right. I think that that was kind of like the, the peak you were going to see. And I thought that was the, you know, 
some of the most OG stuff I'd ever seen when he did that. And he shot him with the arrows and all and the Incredible. way he talked. It was so good. And I, I feel like now kind of looking at it that that was probably the peak of what of what we got How from can this you era. do that and then at 35 with a year off r- reclaim that fire? I just don't know how yeah. – I don't know if that's possible. Now, he was asked at the post-fight press conference to assess his own performance. Long Island Luke, this is the one where he says, I was winning – Basically, until I wasn't. Right. Let's see what he says. I'm, I'm more happy with this fight than my last fight because, again, I performed. Mm-hmm. I showcased myself. I, I felt great, man. I, I felt great. So, again, I wasn't really, like I said, I wasn't hanging on the result. I just wanted to showcase myself, and I felt like I did that tonight. I was, in my eyes, I was winning the fight until I wasn't. So, yeah, as long as I performed, I made myself proud. Mm-hmm. I just don't like the result but again i'm not hanging on the result i'm just proud of with with what i with how i performed it reminds me of this quote from sean connery ever seen the movie the rock in 1996 yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> and uh nicholas cage turns to him and goes i'll do my best and he turns around and he goes your best <laughs> your best he goes uh what did he say he goes That's pretty good he says um he goes uh i forget exactly how he said it but his point is your best is one thing he goes winners go home and fuck the prom queen and he goes carla was the prom queen. <laughs> dude that's hilarious you know max brados yes oh i love so, max. so max like next time you run across him ask him to do a sean, sean Con- he ran into him on the golf course it's just funny You're, yours is pretty damn good but yeah. he's got a funny one too well, uh, so but my point being is i understand what he's saying yeah he per- he didn't even look like himself against strickland yes. he wanted to erase that and he didn't want to hang on the result like all of this is emotionally stable what i'm trying to make is that's an adult thing to say. Right. That's a rational thing to say. That's a smart thing to say. That's not necessarily great for competing. Right. That's where I'm at. No, I, I, mean, I agree with you 100. That's what I'm saying. Like those, those, that, that kind of stuff. Like you use the word inconceivable. I think that that's you. If you were comparing it to the guy who was making his run, and just the way he looked at the fight game, the way he looked at, um, almost like a primal way of looking at fighting, where he was going to go in there and uh, you were trying to take steel from his plate, you know. It's it's come a long way from there. So I, I think that at this point, I don't know if we get that Izzy back. I think that people are clinging to him because I think that people, you can tell me what you think in the canon of, is he, you know, is is he one of those guys who um, his legacy is, like his legacy is certainly secure, but is he one of those guys that we're always going to be talking about, like what are the greats? It's a tough one because I don't think he ever, I think that this fight solidified, maybe the Strickland one first, that he's not a generational like generational fighter, because you look at a guy like Anders, Anderson Silva, sixteen and zero in the UFC to start, um, ten title defenses. He was thirty eight, I think, when he lost to Chris Weidman. Thirty eight. Like, imagine going that long. Like, mm. that's when you compare it, right? Even though I think Izzy's strength of schedule is harder, but if you compare those things, you're like, that's that's more like generational stuff. That's the stuff that you'll always talk about until somebody's able to duplicate it. I don't, I don't know. think. Izzy I guess. I guess it will there. depend how long him being number two in terms of the best middleweights lasts. If that ends yeah. up being quite lasting, I think you could be wrong. On the other hand, if Drickus keeps winning True. and he beats those records, yeah, it probably will be quite ephemeral. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, here's the quote: "Your best, your best. <laughs> Losers always whine about their best. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen." There you go. <laughs> huh? Huh? It's the worst Sean Connery impression oh you've ever God. heard. No, you had the, like, the, uh, or whatever that Yeah, la- last bit on this. Izzy is actually asked about Drickus and how he feels about him. This is what he says. I'm sure losing to this guy stings a little bit more than, than you know, they maybe normally would. Yeah. How desperate are you to get this one back, and how are you going to carry that disappointment mm. moving forward? I'm not really desperate to get it back. I haven't, like, he, he gave me a lot of respect in there, and I gave him his respect back. And I already knew he was a fan of me. I knew he was a fan of me. But I guess now I'm a fan of his because we've been in there. We, we've done it. And when I'm in South Africa, I'll tap in with him. But I said, look, we can hang out. But just so you know, when we have to fight again, I'm going to kill you. He's like, I'm going to kill you too. <laughs> so, yeah, it's always it's, – the respect is always there. And Drickus is an African champion. But, you know, the three kings will reign supreme. That era right there was what set this off for people like him. And he's going to inspire another generation of African fighters as well. So congrats to him tonight. Um, yeah. Until we meet again. There's actually a, 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 a significant amount of truth to this. Yeah. 
obviously Drickus' career was already in motion before any of those the, th the original three kings Kamaru Usman Francis and Ganu and Izzy oh, were champions say Francis, but yes I, I know what you're yeah. <laughs> sorry Francis never heard of this guy before <laughs> but um the, re the reality is and I'll tell the truth about this and people should really understand this one of the hotbeds in African MMA has been for quite some time South Africa mm -hmm. they have had something of a local scene there and guys have come out of it PFL yep. has Don Madge uh, Trevor Prangley came out of South mm -hmm. Africa a long time ago. Remember Trevor Prangley versus Yuki Kondo? And then everyone was yeah. shouting USA, USA. I'm like, he's South African, you fucks. <laughs> you fucking morons. This was in the United States. But the point I'm trying to make is he is the culmination of that. But I do believe that those guys becoming champion, now Drick is becoming champion, it does shine a light yeah. on, I think, a very underserved world in professional mixed yes. martial arts. Yeah, 100%. And I was point. I pointed this out when we were doing the the other show, the Ringer show. Like, they they've been talking about South Africa, the UFC for years. I, I I remember this so specifically. There was you know it was almost like the Dallas. When are you going to go to Dallas Cowboys Stadium? They, there were somebody was always asking, when are you guys going to go to South Africa? You know, and I remember Mike Straka of all people saying something to Dana. This had to have been ten years ago. Like, hey, uh, are the plans for South Africa going to happen? This is like probably 2012. You know, and he's like, I you know. Within the year, he was basically pointing out that they wanted to get there within the next year. Mm. So look at that. It's just crazy that we're in 2024 and still um, they haven't really made headway over there. Even though, like you mentioned, there are fighters coming from over now. they got a champion from over there. Drickus um, deserves a fight in South Africa. He does, Africa. 100%. If they're ever going to do it, it would be This now. is now. Yeah. He beat two of the best guys of the last 10 years, finished them both. Drickus Duplessis deserves a fight in crazy? South Africa. I was thinking about that, too, that gauntlet, right? Like of... You know, you look at it, it, anybody's path through this, but to go through Whitaker, Strickland, and now uh, Izzy is just, that's a hard three-pack right there. Most times, you know, you're looking at these and you're like, well, you got one guy that was kind of a gimme in there. These were all fights I think most people thought he might lose, you know, and he's won them all. So, I mean, like, he's a deserving champion, and I hope they do celebrate him that way.